genomes are just the collection of all the DNA in a human. There's 22 autosomes and an X or a Y in each of us, and we get that set twice, one from mother, one from father. And the genome refers to one complete set of those. When you pass on genetic information to your children, it's rearranged. So you get rearranged pieces that are mixtures of what your mother and your father had. And so our grant was all about trying to understand how the haplotypes, that is the strings of DNA letters in humans, behave through generations. What you're trying to do is unpick a very complicated problem. The first five years of the grant was really quite computationally and methodologically oriented. The second five years is much more experimental, and so the way in which we're doing things has changed quite dramatically. We've now changed to generate a lot of our own data, and we've chosen to do it in two model organisms, the fruit fly and Arabidopsis, a little plant. The basic aim of the exercise is to try and understand using DNA sequences in these two model organisms as though we have perfect information about a human, except we have perfect information about flies and the DNA of plants, and we're going to use that as the input into studying the way in which phenotypes work in plants and flies. You can see uh, those two, for example, how different they are. They were germinated exactly at the same time. They were grown under exactly the same conditions in, in the growth chambers. Um, and you can see, I mean, one is huge, one is tiny. Um, the shape of the leaves is very, very different. It tells us that there is a lot of diversity in the collection we're working on. Diversity can mean what we call phenotypic diversity, which is the diversity that translates into the shape of the plant, for example, the morphology of the plant, um, its, its physical appearance. The phenotypes we're looking at in plant were things to do with flowering time which is one of the most important aspects, of course, of what a plant does. And what we're interested in fly is things to do with aging. The phenotype is aging, and we're going to see how aging works in different conditions. We can only look at a few phenotypes in each organism, and those will translate into the human setting into disease. So we can learn what happens by doing it in plants and flies, where we can get data much more easily. And then, if we are successful at this, and I, well, we have some chance of doing this, we're going to exploit the connections with the medical school to use the methods we've developed in these model organisms uh, in humans. I think in terms of human disease, I think the thing we're trying to get at, the general principle, general question about what is it that really produces the connection between genotype and phenotype is crucial. The fun behind it is just trying to understand what the biology is doing from these incredibly complicated data that we generate. Uh, it may be that it's only complicated because we don't know much yet. Maybe the whole thing will turn out to be dead easy. Doubtful, but maybe. Your body is made up of 50 trillion cells. Cells come in many different varieties with many different functions. But inside almost every cell is a nucleus containing 99.9% .9 of your genes and mitochondria containing a few more genes. All told, you have nearly 20,000 genes. Your genes are small parts of a long molecule called DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid. If you lined up all of the DNA containing all of your genes, it would measure six feet long. But it's coiled so tightly that it fits in just one cell nucleus. DNA is a double-stranded molecule composed of sugar, phosphate, and four different bases. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. These bases spell out the language known as the genetic code. The number and order of these four bases determine, for example, whether you are a chimp, a cow, a banana, or a human. 
Most genes are recipes for making specific proteins. These recipes are passed down from parents to children, from generation to generation. When someone says, you have your father's hair, what they mean is, you appear to have inherited a gene or genes from your father that makes a protein that instructs your hair follicle cells to produce hair that curls like your father's. But they usually opt for the shorter version. Genes tell a cell how to function and what traits to express. More specifically, gene regulators turn different genes on and off in different cells to control cell function. The long molecules of DNA containing your genes are organized into pieces called chromosomes. Different species have different numbers of chromosomes. Humans usually have 46 chromosomes, two sets of 23, or simply 23 pairs of chromosomes. Chimpanzees have two sets of 24, or 24 pairs of chromosomes. Rhesus monkeys have 21 pairs of chromosomes. Cows have 30 pairs of chromosomes. Chickens have 39 pairs. Fruit flies have four pairs, and bananas have 11 pairs. So, what percentage of the DNA in your chromosomes do you share with other species? You share 93% of your DNA with the rhesus monkey, and 98.5% with our friend chimpanzee. How about with other humans? 99.5%. So, what makes us different from one another? Well, for one thing, SNPs. <laughs>